All right, welcome everybody to our Zoom here today. My name is Susie Gazzi and... My name is Lisa Bengtson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for your interest. And we were really, really happy to see how many of you are interested in this topic. Can a Horus change your life? <laughs> and, you know, in truth, my answer is yes. And we're done with the Zoom. <laughs> 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 That's a very clear one. And yes, and then we'll go a bit deeper and ask some questions about it. But it is, I love this question. It has fascinated me looking at it a lot because we all work with animals a lot, you both of us, and especially with horses. And of course, everybody that has a horse knows a lot about this, how they can contribute a lot. But for me, it's also this question, if you're not a horse person, can they contribute to your life? That's a great question. And, you know, I, I realized just recently, and I think this is something we, we are always looking at, um, how much are you willing to receive from everything that's going on around you? You know, and I actually recently had an investation of cockroaches in my house. And um, I had to really look at that and go, okay, so um, am I willing to also receive from the cockroaches? You know, and what is it that I am unwilling to receive from them? Because when it comes to certain critters, we all go like, ee, uh, ooh, and we don't, we don't wish to have them around. We want to kill them as quickly as possible. We want to eradicate them. We want them out of our houses, out of our lives. And yet, what is it that they are contributing to us? You know, what is it that we can receive? Um, and it, this might be sort of like, Ooh, why would I want to receive from a cockroach? But look at it. A cockroach is a very persistent little critter. You know, they don't just go away. I mean, if you have any kind of food source that they found in your house, they will come again and again and again. Even if you put all sorts of things out to kill them, they just get more careful. And it's really interesting. I watched one of them come to my through my door frame, which was really interesting. And it had the feelers and it was just really, it was just checking it out because I could tell, well, the house was empty for two months because I was in New Mexico. And so I could tell the cockroach was like, hmm, something is different, you know, right. and it was just sussing this out. Exactly. And so I had this towel in my hand and I just, I just started going towards the door and it immediately disappeared. So it was that aware of me coming there with a towel to hit it. <laughs> so, you know, just how how amazing is nature and how many things in nature are you unwilling to receive from you know how often are we willing to receive from the dolphins from the whales from the eagles from the horses you know and then yes the dogs and the cats and all that but it's like we have the we have this bizarre way of ranking where we're like yeah those are the top animals i want to receive from and then it's like less and less and less and less and less and less. <laughs> yeah, and especially if we have any points of view. So like for example, uh, somebody mentioned they're scared of a horse. So we often build up barriers to something we have a point of view about or we're scared towards. So instead of asking a question in that moment, we often have this barrier so we cannot receive. And we also have, often have points of views from what we'd like to receive. I love you mentioned cockroach because I grew up with them and that's one of those I did not like if I needed water in the night, I had to go to the kitchen and step on one. That was one of my like, oh, I don't want that. Um, and then I see the world is here facilitating and contributing to us all the time. We often have a point of view, what we will receive from. And I remember Gary Douglas saying once when something happened that wasn't so nice, he said, what contribution is this to your life? And I got like, that's one of the questions that I love so much in situations where I have some kind of maybe point of view that this is not good for me. Or then I look at the question instead of, well, what contribution is this to my life? And my world usually expands. And going to horses, I love it because we do usually have some kind of point of view if we like horses, afraid of them, love them, or they're just like, I don't know what to do with them. Um, so yeah, we talk a lot about horses and bottom line, we go back to what can we create with them and receive from them today? What can they, can they change your life? <laughs> 
And and one of the things with horses that is also fascinating for me has always been is that a horse is is basically a pack animal. It does live usually with other horses. Horses don't do well on their own. They like to be with other horses. They like to be in a herd. And so <clears throat> when we as people are trying to become part of the herd, it becomes a really interesting adventure and a really interesting dynamic because a horse is actually a prey animal and we're a predator. What does that mean? We eat meat and we eat horses. So we are actually a, a predator to a horse. And now we're asking a horse to be our friend. We're asking a horse to trust us when the horse inherently wants to run away and say, excuse me, you're a predator. I should better get out of here. Now, horses have been around us for a long time and they have really helped us develop our inhabitants of the earth by carrying our stuff and helping us with all sorts of things. So horses have been a really contributory energy for a very long time. And still there is this little barrier that we need to overcome. And so, cause somebody was saying, well, how can I trust a horse? It's actually more like, well, how can the trust the horse trust you? <laughs> how can the horse actually trust you that you're not going to eat it? Because uh, you do have that capacity, and the horse knows it. So uh, a lot of times when we when we have those questions, we think that we have to learn how to trust a horse. But it's really, in truth, it's the other way around. And if you turn that around and you recognize that you actually have to start acting in a way that makes the horse comfortable with you, mm. then it becomes a little bit of a different story because all of a sudden you realize that, oh, Yes, a horse is big and you might be frightened of a horse, but in truth, the horse actually has a lot of respect for you. Yes, it really does. And what I've also seen when working with horses in the way we do with question and energy, because we show up maybe with a different also awareness and also willingness to create with horses. Uh, with the access tools. And I've seen then the horse also look becoming so much more curious in co-creating with us because we are curious, we're asking questions. And if I do have a point, so for example, if I don't trust myself, the horse will also perceive that. Often their energetically <laughs> act, act their action is often also really attached to us so that's why I love I love it the best coach and co-facilitator I have is a horse because they will just like not filter anything they're just being whatever you're being in that moment and also but they have this patience and willingness to also wait for you to choose at any moment change anything and this is where I'm like if we were willing to know that that's possible also with people but we're willing to receive it from animals there's something i've noticed myself i trust myself much more since i work with horses i've done it a lot with dogs before but it became even more like potent in me and from my choice different because it's not like i can just hold it if i want to it's a it's an animal if they want to go away they go away a dog well, there are some dogs that will definitely, I cannot hold, but most of them I will be able to hold. So there's a different level that I have to be, it is a trust together. It is a co-creation. And that's what I, something I love because they're willing to be here for us. And when, when you're willing to receive that, for me, my world has melted so many times where I'm so grateful that I stepped into creating and co-facilitating with horses. And I'm so grateful, Susie, that you keep on doing it and really kept on doing it and Gary too, because it has changed my way of living and also creating my life with much more allowance, much more receiving um, and not being the bulldozer that I used to do a lot and choose. <laughs> It is that actually that is so fascinating. Thank you for saying that, Lisa, because gosh, there's been so many times where either while I was facilitating, but also just when I'm alone with a horse, it is so fascinating how quickly the way that you are showing up gets reflected back at you so fast. I mean, there is literally no 
like you said, no filter, you know, yeah. no, no time lapse. It's like the way you show up, the horse will be completely just reflecting whatever that is. And, and it's not so much about, oh, the horse is your mirror. You know, this is not an esoteric woo woo stuff. It's really that the horse perceives your energy and the horse knows where you're at. And the horse knows if you're in a rush, the horse knows if you're upset, the horse knows if you're angry, the horse knows pretty much everything that's going on for you. And it will then respond to that. And every horse is different. So, you know, if you're showing up with like, you know, Leeson was mentioning sort of a bulldozer energy, which is like, you know, this constant, you know, push, then some horses might really sit back and, and try to avoid you and not get close to you. Others might get a little feisty and get more in your face, you know? Oh yeah, what do you want? What do you want? You know, so it really depends on the character of the animal too um how they are going to respond to your energy but they always will respond to it and so it's that is the part where i've also in facilitation sometimes see people just uh really recognize how they're working with others and how they are showing up with others like this one lady she was supposed to make a horse go around her on a line we call that lunging and she was trying and trying and then she started begging the horse please do this for me and it was so interesting because i said so how does this translate to your workplace do you do that when you're asking people to do something for you and they're not delivering do you start begging them and she said yeah i do <laughs> and and then is it working because with the horse, it wasn't working. The horse was just standing there going, what do you want from me? Um, there were no clear instructions. It was just she was begging the horse to do something, but the horse didn't even know what she wanted. So it's so much fun to see that too, because it becomes so clear so quickly. And this, uh, this can be one exercise that um, shows up in a conscious horse, conscious rider class that you might go to and you know, and you might see for yourself, how do you deal with tasks like that, where you maybe don't know how to do them at first, but you do have a, you do have sort of an idea of what you want to do, but yet you don't know how to create that. And where do you go? Do you become insecure? Do you become forceful? Do you become a bitch? Do you become a beggar? You know, what is it? How do you, how do you deal with those situations? And it's really fun to be part of that. Yeah, no, but that's really true. And I often ask what people want to create in their lives when we start class, because for me, it's like I use the horses to facilitate the change you desire in your life. And they're so willing to contribute to that. So whatever you're asking for, whatever you really desire, this is where I add a horse that creates a very different awareness where there's no judgments. There's no projections. There's right, really no right and wrong. They're not standing there like, oh, let's wait for her to choose. Oh my God, this is taking so much time. We do that. They don't. They will just stand there like, but if you're not present at some point, they're like, can we go somewhere else and eat? Like, can we do something else? But the moment you shift, the moment you change, the moment you choose, you will see a co-creation with an animal, with a horse that becomes really clear. And for me, like I talk often about communication where we say something with words, but we're energetically not congruent. We're not saying the same thing for the horses and animals. It's like, if it's the same energy, it's so clear when it's not, it's not clear. We say it's clear. I'm using these words. It's clear. I'm like, maybe not for the receiver. So it's communication about what I'm saying and you should get it, or also about what the receiver is receiving in that moment from me. And I love that with horses because I do talk to them with words, but you will see the energy shifting when I'm present, when I'm not present. If I have a point of view, if I have a conclusion, if I'm afraid, because people come off and like, are afraid. I think maybe 50% of the participants in conscious horse, conscious rider classes of mine have been afraid of horses and they say it. Some have even called Lisa, you have to promise I don't have to sit on a horse. And I was like, yeah, that, that's okay. I, I usually forget my promises, but I don't, there's nothing you have to do in a class. There is nothing we, we don't have a, 
goal that you have to reach because this is the right thing in this class. Not at all. It's like steps in your life, whatever you want to choose, how far you would like to go. But they will definitely create a lot of awareness in the exercises we do because we get more aware of us. And, and for me, I learned really there cannot be any point of view what's right. There cannot be a point of view that we have a goal here because then we're targeting something that maybe will not show up and then the judgments kick in. And living on this planet, we don't really require judgments, but it's so common that we don't even think we have judgments sometimes that we do have. And I've got, I'm so grateful seeing that space when there is no points of views and there is no judgment and you're not judging yourself. That co-creation in that moment, that energy, that space you have for you and for everybody involved is so beautiful. And I was like, that's what I want to live on this planet. So I have gratitude for every person that comes and is willing to take that leap into different world and a different you're choosing your reality and I've heard so many people coming and they get these that do the exercise it gets so aware of them and then they go home and then they call me or send me a message wow now it's so much more easy to be with people and talk to them I'm like that's awesome so the horse changed that I'm like this is awesome <laughs> they are really incredible with that for sure <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, I seem to be <clears throat> having something going on here. I'm not sure what it is, but I keep coughing. So anyway, um, yeah, so in general, it's it's really the one thing that Gary Douglas, the founder of Access, also always says, and he says it over and over, is that everything he's ever learned, he's learned from a horse. And he's been around horses since he was three years old, and his grandpa put him on, on his first horse at that time and, and he grew up being uh, a horse wrangler and he actually became a horse trainer and all that before you know he started doing all this other stuff and access came into his life so he was very much involved with horses for a long time and so you know he always has this phrase and in the beginning I was like yeah 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 and now I'm really getting it. It is something else when when you are with a horse and the horse shows you something that really stays with you. That is really something where you are where you are learning something that you can take along for ever. You you do really get a different awareness than even if a person is facilitating you. There is just a different space there. And I think what Leeson was saying too, that space of no judgment, the horses really don't have judgment of you at all. But again, that doesn't mean that they just stand there the whole day if you're not sure what you want to do. And if you're not present, like Leeson said, the horse will turn around and say, I'm going to go eat now, you know, because uh, obviously you don't have anything else for me to, to do, so I'm going to eat. And that's more interesting. So it's not that they will just acquiesce to everything that you're asking for. That's not it either. Um, and some horses might actually, quote unquote, fight you. But a lot of times the funny thing is the horses that will fight you are often also perceiving the fight in you. So they're again fighting you because maybe you're not sure what you want or you're not sure how to do it. And so they're now quote unquote fighting you or you have this sense about fight in your own life mm. and you fight for everything or fight against everything. And some of us do that, you know, we have certain ways that we are conducting our lives and we you know, may not even be aware of it until we get together with a horse and we play with a horse and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, mm -hmm. is that what I'm doing? Is that how I'm showing up in life? Oh, do I wish to do that? Do I wish to show up like this? Or is there something else I'd like to do and change? So you do get a chance. And you know what the fun thing is? The second you change it, literally the second you change it, the horse changes with you. In that second. And I've seen this over and over and over when a participant chooses something else and they're willing to just go okay let's choose again 
and the horse responds in a totally different way. Mm. You're yeah. like, wow, that is so cool. So the horse also doesn't hold on to anything. The horse doesn't come to you and says, well, you know, five minutes ago, you were a real bitch. So now I'm just going to stand over here and I'm just going to show you that I'm not going to do anything for you because you're being a bitch. The horse doesn't think that way. You know, <clears throat> they don't go out for revenge or they don't function like that. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's really fun to see also when you're willing to be different, the horse just goes, okay, cool. That was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, now you know what you want. Oh, okay, cool. I'll do that for you. <laughs> and they're always waiting for you to choose. And choice for us yeah. is not always the way we think it is in action. And that's something I was so grateful seeing because it's really choice, 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 choice. Not I'm choosing and then it's done. No, they will see if you're really present with your choice and choosing all the time. I mean, the 10 seconds increment where it's really the energy lasts 10 seconds, then you have to choose again. When I saw that in action with a horse, I was like, this is so freaking beautiful because one, it was with my horse in Spain and one facility was launching my horse and my horse literally just every moment she did not choose, my horse was going, let's go somewhere else. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. So every time she chose and just saying choice helped the horse just to direct the energy wherever she was choosing towards. So this is where you get to play with also the access tools in action, seeing Okay, are you in your head with this? Are you being them? Are you willing to let go of any point of view or any projection or any conclusion how they should work? That's one thing I was like, if I say this, this should show up. Uh, let's be in the question. And what does the question mean when you create with an animal? And those things you'll see in action all the time. So for me, it's like I have a co-facilitator or many, often we have lots of them. Now, Susie will be my co-facilitator in Spain, but then we have lots of other co-facilitators. So we're going to have a bunch of facilitators there <laughs> uh, creating together with you guys. And you'll see also when you're stuck with something or when Susie said, like, you'll see the underneath things and there can be layers of them. And there's this vulnerability that is often there with the horses when you let go of your barriers, that it can also just go through all of the layers at one time and just change that. And often, and this is the beauty where I feel it's like, this is the magic of creation and where consciousness is in action. There's often also contribution towards the horse. The horses show up and have their things too. They might have some things that are stuck from their owners or something they picked up. So there's often both sides of it that is so beautiful. Some people are more like, I have to save or contribute to the horse. And the horse is like, but if you're not receiving, I'm not going to receive you. So there's, there's this is co-creation all the time, receiving both and gifting. Um, I remember one body facilitator being in class and we did body work. And after we had conversations about it, and she said it was the first time she had done body work with somebody, like somebody, a body, where there was no judgments. She's like, oh, this is a different energy. And so she's like, oh, now I'm getting what there is a totally different space to be. So you get to do a lot of different exercises, body work, entity clearings, but I love the questions and communication with animals. Uh, this, this is just so much fun, but we have like, we have so many tools. So some of them will show up depending also what you guys are desiring. Uh, but there will, the one thing I guarantee you, there will be change because the horses are so up for contributing. Of course we can fight it. Of course we can say no. And that's also allowed. It's your choice. And this is what I love, choice creates. So whatever you choose, you'll see something's creating. And uh, we have fun with that. And I always ask the horses, show us something that we don't, we're not aware of or something that can contribute to our lives or something I am not willing to be aware of. And so I just start asking them. Um, I always do that when I start writing also that they show me a different world or something. And it's fun to see because they are very much more aware of our world and our reality than I've ever thought it, it, I've not, before I didn't think they really understood everything that we're doing and choosing here in this, in this world, 
but they do much more. So now I usually play along and I'm like, yeah, they're so aware. They're usually my best social media advisors, <laughs> uh, but that's the playfulness I've started to have with animals because they know things, but I don't try to project that they know. I ask them and asking questions, what shows up, up after that is freaking amazing. Because I also know, like before, when I was working with animals, I often had to, I often had conclusion, oh, this is the right thing. Now they're, I'm doing something good. Now they will be happy. Instead of just like, I could just ask the horse. I could ask the dog. And this is where we as people think we need to be superior and know instead of just asking. And that's been one of the things from so grateful. That is, that is one of the things I think, um, that you never you never stop <laughs> becoming aware of is the asking part because gosh we weren't really taught the whole asking bit you know as as children we were not we were stopped asking questions because we asked too many of them you know as a two-year-old you had all these questions really probably to annoy your parents too but Still, you did have a lot of questions and, you know, and then you were basically shut down a whole lot. And so and then in school, it was all about getting the answer to something. So asking questions is a muscle that we all have to build again and that we have to be willing to have in our world and not a question from a conclusion, but a question really from the curiosity when the questions and access like what else is possible really means what else is possible. Not, oh, I already know nothing else is possible, but I'm just gonna say what else is possible because that's what you do in access. But really being the energy of what else is possible, no matter what, you know, if you're in a bad situation, a good situation, whatever situation you're in, what else is possible, opens the door to what else is possible. And so that is, that is so true you know being in the question and having question as your foundation mm -hmm. is such an amazing tool and the animals are so grateful when we ask questions because so many times we come to some conclusion especially when the relationship isn't working we have all these two conclusions to why it's not working oh it's because it's because it's because it's because but we never take the space and just be there and really ask, what is this? What's up? Mm. We never really take that space. And it's not time, it is really space that you have to take in that moment. Give that question the space to hang and don't try to immediately jump to the next answer to the next conclusion but really just hanging there with the question and being willing for that to show up and to show you what's going on you know somebody was saying they were with <clears throat> with a horse and a young horse and the little horse was biting okay what is that you know now they have a bruise okay what is that and being willing to really perceive whatever that is and not come to conclusion or think like, oh, a horse that bites me is a bad horse. Not necessarily, especially when it's a young horse. A young horse doesn't know how fragile we are. You know, when they bite each other, have you seen them play with each other, kicking and biting? I mean, honestly, that if they did that with us, we would be bruised from head to toe. Um, but they can do that with each other and get away with it without blemishes. And yet, if we were part of that, we wouldn't look like that. So the horse also has to learn that we are fragile. Mm -hmm. We are much more fragile than another horse. And, you know, so how do you teach a young horse that you're fragile? You know, what language can you use to show them that when they bite you, it really hurts? You know, so um just looking at that too it's not coming to conclusion oh if a horse bites me it hates me mm. no maybe you know yes maybe maybe <laughs> maybe that particular horse hates you i doubt it though you know i really doubt it so um just really being willing to to have that space to to be in an energy where you're curious about what is actually going on what's up 
and not come from your preconceived ideas about what you heard about horses, what you have experienced with horses maybe in the past, and sometimes even picking up the stuff that other people have that are around you. Um, when you first encountered a horse, most likely when you were a little kid, you know, you might have been with your grandparents at, you know, at a, an amusement park, or you maybe went to a horse stable or with your parents. And, you know, and what is the very first thing most people have? <gasps> My child is going to die. You know, the it's around a big horse. The horse is going to trample it. The horse is going to kick it. The horse is going to bite it. The horse is going to throw it off. I mean, all these things most parents have when they bring their kids around horses so you as a psychic being pick all that up and so then you're now thinking maybe all these thoughts feelings and emotions about horses are yours but they were maybe never yours they were just all the stuff you picked up from your parents on your very first horse encounter mm. So you could return all that to Sandra now, actually, if you would like to. <laughs> That's really cool. Um, I, I've noticed when I meet up with animals, let's say horses, one of the things I directly do, if you want to try it out when you're on a horse, is really lower my barriers. Because I have barriers. It's like, I'm not going to walk around and say I don't have them because they're very often there. So what I do is often just pull them down and then I ask, what contribution can I be here to you? And then I also ask, what contribution can I receive? So there's always this float between us. Uh, there's a lot of questions about, like when Susie was addressing also this thing, when they do something or they buy you or, or do something that's maybe a little rougher, we often go to quick to a conclusion. But there can also be that they're just trying to tell us something in the way they know how to talk to us. And so sometimes I just like, hey, what are you trying to tell me? Hey, this does not work the way because this really hurts. Please show me or tell me in a different way. So I've noticed so many animals are aware of your whole world of thoughts, of your life, of everything. And if there's areas that you're not willing to be really present with or receive, they sometimes like just come on, come on coming to you and say like, hey, can you look at this? Can you look at this? Can you look at this? And if you're not willing to ask a question and you think it has to do just because they bite you, it means something directly about that situation. It can be something totally different in your life, totally different. And this is the magic I've been seeing. They are aware about your whole world, not only the thing that's in front of you, the moment, oh, they want something of you. They want to eat something. They want it. No, be aware. It can be totally different. They can be facilitating your life. And when you start looking at that and asking questions and you come to an area, you'll see the behavior also changing with the horse. I even have had other animals, like really a rooster jumping on the participant afterwards and poking it in the back. And that person wasn't willing to look at who was stabbing her in the back. I'm like, a rooster? Like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. This is fun. So animals often want to contribute to our life. Not only, it's almost like we think it's the immediate thing that's happening in that moment, but be aware it's much bigger than that. And they're so willing to contribute to you choosing greater, having a greater life, having more fun. When you're joyful, they're like, yes, let's move forward like this. And this is like, they don't want you to be strict and perfect and right and have the perfect, I don't know, writing clothes and sit perfectly. They want you to be there, have fun with them, create with them, ask questions. You'll see when you start asking questions to horses, well, you're in for a ride because you will not stop because they are going to demand more. This is also when I go to a new place, I tell the owners, if we start with this, this is going to change your horses too. They will know that you get this. They will demand more of you. I warn them with that. I warn the participants, you might want a horse in your life. So I'm just saying that because that does happen after class that people buy their horse. So there's almost a guarantee somebody will buy a horse often after class. <laughs> I remember Gary saying that even in facilitators training. <laughs> People might just want a horse afterwards, even if they have no idea what it means to have a horse. So we're going to warn you with that too. Um, <laughs> and it is a great facilitator. And it's not about riding, although of course you can be riding and there's amazing things that you also experience riding a horse. But with conscious horse kind of riding, it's really about 
creating with the horse in the class. We're so we're, we might be sitting a horse, but we're not going to be, usually we don't go riding in a class. Uh, we might sit and walk. You never know because it depends wherever you are, what's required for you, what's the next step. So we don't have a conclusion how the short class will be because it's an energy we're following with, the, with you guys, with the horses, with the land, with everything. And I think that's one thing that really I got really grateful for because I understood it's not one thing I have to receive. It's from everything. So if I don't, if I stop receiving from the land, it becomes really awkward. So we will also be training, receiving from everything and everything contribute to your life. Not like even the cockroaches are allowed to be there for you. You might not want them in your house. I definitely don't, but they're willing to be there maybe for you. So this is where are you willing to receive from everything? Are we willing to look at really not having a point of view, getting out of conclusion? Conclusions are really fun because they don't work with animals very well. Not at all. But we think, and we think we're smart when we have the right conclusion. And also like when they start, this is one thing I saw, when they choose to have a misbehavior or a physical thing and they're in class, I warn the owners, hey, just don't go to a conclusion that the food is wrong or something else. They must just be showing you something different. They might be fooling you. They might just not want the job they have. So here's really important to start continue asking questions because oh, they, they might choose to create some physical thing if they don't want to do what you decided they should be doing. So just warning, when you start doing this with your animals, they know you know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and one participant is asking, you know, can we give them some examples of how to create with a horse? And some things can be absolutely, totally physical and linear in a way that you go out with a horse and you start <clears throat> literally playing with them in whatever way that you choose, you know, by riding them, by working with them on the ground, by doing things together. But the thing that we're also looking at is the energetic part of it. And that is totally not linear. And it's also not logical. Um, I remember many, many years ago, I had my first horse <clears throat> and it's an expense. You know, you do have money that you pay when you have a horse. That's just the way it is. And so, uh, you know, I kept grappling over that and going like, well, I don't have the money for this. Why do I have a horse? Why am I doing this? Why am I choosing this expense? I, I barely can pay my rent. Why do I have a horse? Why, you know, and I kept going into this weird spiral stuff. And then one day I was like, wait a minute, excuse me, let's change this around. And I really started to talk to my horse and I said, hey, can you please contribute money to my life? And so again, it's not about the linearity of that. It's not about, oh, the horse is going to win shows or the horse is going to make expensive babies or anything like that. It was just, I kept asking the horse to please contribute to my money inflow. And all of a sudden I had more income. I can't explain this to you logically. I can't even explain to you what I did. It was just all of a sudden there was more money and more money and more money. And I was like, well, this is interesting. And now I have more horses and more money. <laughs> this is really interesting. How does this work? I cannot explain this to you, but I literally started asking the horses to contribute and now do it with my dogs and my cat. I ask them, hey, can you contribute to my money flows, please? I remember that with my horse too because after that I chose so differently and I had a conversation with my dad I was like it's so interesting here everybody's saying it's so expensive with a horse like I'm making much more money it's like the best business investment I've ever done I cannot have an expense in my business but gosh I'm creating more he's like yeah it's a really good investment you did for your business like yeah it was so fun to having that conversation too because I've also noticed that a lot, but I can't expect it, but I can ask for it and I can start creating with them. And yeah, and I, I know if a lot of people have the point of view, it's expensive to have horse or animals, anything. And if I have that point of view, well, that's what I'm also going to create. So we will also be addressing all those things in class to create and receive with animals because it's an amazing world. It works. 
but I can't just expect it, but I can definitely ask for it and create it and receive it. I think that's beautiful. And I love, now you have so many horses. <laughs> Susie says it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing is too, you don't have to have an animal in your life to ask animals to contribute to you. Just ask, ask the animals to contribute to you. What, what energetically could contribute to you right now? You mm -hmm. know, what animal do you feel drawn to or what animal could actually assist you right now in a situation that you're in? I love that one. Like if mm -hmm. you are in any kind of conflict or in anything that goes on in your life, ask the energy of an animal, what animal could contribute to this to this conversation right now, to this conflict, to this being resolved. And it's so funny, I've had feedback from people that said, I had a tarantula energy come into my world. Or one said, I had an orangutan show up for me. Like, not physically, but you know, the energy. And then they would ask, so what would the tarantula say? What would the orangutan do? And all of a sudden, things would change and the whole energy would shift and their their conflict would dissipate. So you don't have to have a specific animal right now or a horse in your world to ask for that energy to be present in your life and to assist you in changing things for you. And so, you know, and one participant was saying, well, can we please get back on topic? Like the change, what, how can a horse change my life? This whole talk was about that. And it's not linear. It is not about, oh, do this and the horse will change that for you. No, it's like, are you willing to receive horse energy in your life? I and mean, what could that look like? Yeah. I, no, I love it because often when we think, when we own something, then we can receive and then we're close and connected. And I love when you say, just ask for the energy. I often connect to animals I've had met or any energy. So even if, even, with other things as well. But I love when you say that because we think it has to be in a specific way. And we often create this intimacy or vulnerability when we're close to somebody that we own. Like if I have my dog or have my own horse, then we create magical connections. And I was like, no, you don't. You never have to own an animal to receive or contribute or create with an animal. And the thing is you have to ask for it. So can a horse change your life? start asking. What if you ask, can a horse create change for you? Can you create, can you create with a horse? Like ask this question, can a horse create change, can change your world? Ask it and see what creates in your world. And are you willing to connect to animals and allow them to contribute and allow them to show you a different reality? I think it's amazing what, how many projections we have at everything. Uh, uh, all the animals how they should be and what they should live up to and also what should this class create for you for example I was like what if we didn't have anything and we were super curious and we we don't need to have a conclusion about any animal even now if you have a horse if you meet up with the horse the next time hey ask a question don't assume you have the perfect relationship and everything's great ask something. Hey, can you show me something different? Can you help me with this? I don't know. I usually have my business meetings with animals. And it's like, if I have classes and I have a lot of horses, I'm like, oh, I'm going to use this to my advantage. I go into the stable, have my little chit chats and talk to them. And then I talk, hey guys, I need help with this and this and this. You guys have so much time. So please let's create. And it's so much fun. And they, they, they know every language. And I joke, every, every horse that I meet understands Swedish. And often I show them that they do, but they don't care what language you're talking to them, not at all. And this is the fun part. You don't have to have the right question. Just start being curious, allow the horse to show you. And also be very open and curious to them showing it in a different way than you decided how it should show up. Because if they look at you this way, that means that. If they do that, that means that. What if you destroyed and create all of that and allowed them in every moment to be different? It's the same thing. We have conclusions about our bodies. Oh, that hurts because of, hmm. Well, maybe my body is telling me something different. Maybe the horse is telling you something different. So what if you didn't have to own a horse to receive change in your world? <laughs> what a concept. <laughs> And you're allowed to buy a horse too, but you don't have to. <laughs> exactly.
but I love horses and I love being around of them. And I can say every time I'm around a horse and I ask questions, it's almost like this, I don't know, I have more ease being here on the planet. I have more fun being here on the planet. And yes, I love animals and I love creating with animals and with people because I don't want to separate from people. I also really like being with people. So I wanted this planet to have everything that we receive from the earth. We receive from animal, plants, people. We're all here together. And that's something I see animals are, I think, great at that, that they do have this receiving and creating with everything. And we sometimes have more partial receiving and this is what I like, this I don't like, I'm gonna avoid this, I don't like the city, I like that. And I was like, what if everything can contribute and create with you? And what if I'm willing to have everything contributing and creating with me? So what if we allowed the horse to contribute to our lives? And I know from one hour here talking or from what we're saying, maybe it won't change your life, but maybe you would, you get curious of doing that. Maybe you'll show up in a class and I, and I love it. I'm like, people show up and have no idea about horses and don't even like horses or afraid of horses. I've never had a participant yet that comes to a class that is afraid of horses that leaves being afraid of horses. Because what I often see that there's a lot, there's so much awareness. You're aware of everybody's points of views about but the communication you start having with them. They're there for you. You're there for them. Let's start chatting. Let's start talking. And that's often much more, it's much easier than we think, but we've made it often complicated. And that's where I'm like, let's bring it back to an ease with everything. Because if you can chat with a horse, you can chat with anybody. <laughs> that is so true. That's a good hashtag now. <laughs> hashtag exactly. <laughs> and you know, um somebody in the chat earlier was saying they they they're going to some kind of safari and they want to touch a lie and I and I had to smile when I read that um because it's it's so interesting um like you know how do I touch a lie and uh, well first of all um I would say Anytime you are around an animal, if you have a need, a really strong need, just be aware that that animal most likely is going to look at you a little bit strange because animals don't really function so much from need. They do have quote unquote needs themselves, like they eat and they sleep and they drink and they need shelter and all that. But even with that, there isn't a needy energy there. Uh, we as people, we have sort of invented that interesting place where we sometimes have need. And so when we need something from an animal, I can almost guarantee you that that animal is probably going to not deliver what you were looking for, but something else. So if you are driving through the jungle needing to see a lion, it may not show up. But if you have the curiosity to meet a lion, and you're pulling energy from the jungle to really see a lion, that lion may show itself and it may actually show itself in pride and be like, yep, here I am. Touching the lion, that might be a different story. And you may want to look at that because, you know, yeah, you might be touching a lion for the first and the last time. Um, just ask a question, you know, just just be aware. Um, so you know, anything is possible. You just, you know, just please be aware when you're asking for things like that too. Um, so anyway, I'm just, you know, making a little joke here, but really look at like, what is the energy that you're approaching this with? Are you coming from the space of total curiosity and like, whoa, I would be so honored to meet a lion? Or are you coming from this place of like, I'm an animal communicator and I, I am in the need of seeing a lion and I will see a lion because I know how to do that or whatever, you know, like I'm not saying that's who you are, but just look at that too. And that's so true when we're around any animal and, and, and really in nature too, when we're willing to be curious, when we're willing to receive and really have a look around us, we can receive so much more than if we're going with a particular need that we already have that needs to be fulfilled. Uh, cause you know, you know how that works. Oftentimes the things you want to have fulfilled are the things that don't show up until you let go and then they show up. I mean, you might've seen that with, you know, 
partners in your life where you're like, I need a partner. And then nothing, 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 nothing. And then three years later, I give up. And there's your partner. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this is how, <laughs> you know. You don't have a relationship class, just be, if you wonder. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so, and this is, but this is actually true. I always find that the conscious horse, conscious rider classes touch on so many different things mm -hmm. because you don't just hang out with a horse. This is about, like we started this conversation, this is about how you show up in the world. And it really is everything, mm -hmm. you know? So yes, it is relationship. It is your money flows. It is the way you're handling people. It is what you like and dislike. It is the judgments or the non-judgments that you have. It's all of that. So this, I always find these classes so incredibly full and rich because they are touching on so many other things that have nothing to do with animals. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but because it shows up in the presence of animals and uh, that's the gift I think that these classes are too. I, I really love anytime mm. there's animals in classes. I just, I have a smile on my face. I just can't help myself. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but it's truly every area of life will show up in the class. And I often have this, also I love uh, talking about being the leader of your life because animals are asking you for, to be a leader, a conscious leader, not a boss or something like that, but really willing to choose and create your life. And you'll see every topic is addressed uh, if you have a question and there's nothing that we won't talk about. So it's not about only horses, it's about your life. That's why can a horse change your life? And the contribution of that is endless. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful every time I get to facilitate these classes and invite horses, no matter if I have five, 10, 15, 20. In Austria, I think I had 19. I was like, this is awesome. What can I receive from 19 horses creating with the participants? Because it's not only one energy that is a one facilitation, it's all of it that we can receive. And that's why I'm like impressed and it challenges me every time to be aware of more and ask for more and receive more and also this vulnerability with everything and everybody showing up and contributing to each other it's it's beautiful so that's why I love having animals in my life and I love co-creating with horses and I am so grateful for Gary always just saying it so in every class almost well everything I learned I learned from horses and you're like huh? What do you mean? <laughs> and then when you see it in action, you're like, oh, I'm starting to get it. I'm starting to get what do you mean? I'm starting to really get the energetic way of access consciousness in a totally different way, creating my mm. business in a different way, being with people in a different way. I'm like, thank God, I'm so happy. <laughs> this. So I'm, I'm so grateful for that. And I know we cannot address everything today. So this is just like, and opening a door of possibilities and you get to choose and also use the questions with the animals and with people and be aware where you kick in with points of views or judgments or and then allow yourself also to change that um, be present and kind to yourself yeah for sure and this class can address pretty much any topic you know um does it improve your writing skills Possibly it depends on who is facilitating the class and who is playing with you. Um, you know, in some classes, we never climb on a horse with a saddle. Um, most likely we climb on a horse bareback, but most likely not with a saddle. And some, some, uh, some facilitators really love the riding part and they do that more. So just check it out too, because no classes alike. You do get a very extensive manual with this class with a lot of topics that are covered and uh, the facilitators do the best to cover most of what's in the manual, but it can go in so many different directions that um, it is hard to predict what the class is actually going to be addressing, like in terms of topics. I would say always follow your knowing. You know which class is pulling you. You know where you want to go. You know where you want to be. Um, your body will show you. Um, and then 
just follow that you know there isn't uh, there isn't the perfect facilitator and the perfect class because every class is different so you just get to choose like Lisa says choose you know choose you know we can't tell you what's best for you or what will be the greatest class for you to attend or if you even should come to a class or not you that's your choice that is your that is something that you have to look at you know is this going to be contributing to your life is this going to make your life greater and uh, those are the questions you can ask you know and one of the questions um we always say like ask if i go there or if i do this what will my life be like in five years if i choose this and then compare it what will my be my life be like in five years if i don't and just compare the energies that you get from that um, and see what is a contribution and that's the easiest way to see that and it has no logic because usually five years in the future many people can't really you know it's like and if you really want to make it crazy do 500 years into the future then it becomes really out of logic you know so <laughs> <laughs> and these classes are only live so there's a question of it's online no it's live we're going to be touching horses we're going to be present there and that's one of the things that is also a gift being present with bodies and I often ask the horses of the class like hey pull in the people that are going to create with you that you can contribute with and if you feel drawn to a class because of a horse or something you'll know if you're going to show up there. That's one thing I cross and I take, hey, if you know you're going to be there, if a horse is calling you, choose it. You don't know what will be created. You can never conclude what we'll get out of one of these classes. I don't have no idea because I don't know what you're asking for. But when you start asking those questions for horses, that's when magic shows up. And if you're pulled to any class, ask the facility. For example, if you want to come to one of our classes now, connect with us. We have a lot of the practical things and all that, of course, in place. But be aware, it might not be logic why you want to come or why you feel pulled <laughs> into a class. Uh, it often isn't in any class, but you'll notice like, but I have nothing to do with horses or I'm, well, what do I do with this one? I want to learn this and this. I'm like, you don't know. And this is the beauty also I see. It can be about a connection, a receiving change. Oh God, I've seen so many bodies change during classes where I'm like, is this is this horse a chiropractor or what? Like I have seen <laughs> hips changing where I'm like, and I won't go into those details often people then project or expect, but what I've seen horses do for bodies, it's been, I, I still don't know what the horse did, but we all saw it. And I was like, okay, that definitely is possible. So we, we don't know what you're asking for, but we do know that there will be a change and a contribution and a creation. Um, so we're happy for everybody that's coming so and it's physical so we get to meet you and physically hug you or not hug you depending <laughs> on what you like to choose I'm going to hug everybody that wants to be hugged <laughs> otherwise we can all hug horses that works very well too just ask if the horse wants to have a hug <laughs> exactly and just for one more question too so you know in terms of like do people bring their own horses it always depends on the class and on the stables um, but uh, you do not have to have a, a horse to come to class. You don't have to own a horse to come to class. Like Lisa said, so many of the participants are afraid of horses, don't even want to touch a horse, and they still come. I always think that's incredible when people choose that and uh, oftentimes leave. We had one extreme case where a lady came. She was terrified of horses, and she's now a horse trainer. So... Um, that to me was probably the most extreme development of somebody who showed up to a class like that. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, we, like Lisa said, we, we cannot answer every single solitary question. We do talk about death if it's up in the air. We talk about anything, li literally anything. Um, and also Lisa and I both have websites. We're going to send you a little email with some information. You can look us up, you know, we have also other things we've done, podcasts and other information that's out there. You can also go to the Conscious Source, Conscious Writer website, have another look at that as well. And just to kind of um, get some more information, if you're hungry for more, let us know. Um, we're here, like Lisa says, find us, connect with us, and um, we're here for you. We can answer more things for you. Um, but uh, it was not about this being a class. This was just like the opening of a door to a different possibility. And really, 
also show you that you don't have to have a horse right now to receive from a horse and to have your life be touched by a horse. So thank you all so much for being here. Um, we are so grateful for you and that you showed up and that you're so interested and it's really fun to have you. And yeah, thank you for all the translators. You guys are amazing. Thank you for translating this for us. And yeah, so it will also be available for you in a download. You can watch it again, listen to it, however you choose. Thank you so much. And those are beautiful words to end this soon. Thank you, Susie. <laughs> Thank you so much. And thanks for everybody being so present here and asking questions. And uh, yeah, what else is possible? <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Let a horse hug you. <laughs> <laughs> ciao. Ciao a tutti. <laughs> ciao, Lisa. Ciao, Jason. <laughs>